The following is a local resident producer's program. The program content is the sole responsibility of the producer and does not necessarily reflect the views or policies of Oshkosh Media, the City of Oshkosh, or Time Warner Cable. Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of Ayan Oshkosh. I'm your host Cheryl Hans, and we've got someone on the show tonight that in the 14, 15 years I've been doing this, we've never had them on before, never had this company on before, so this is a first and I'm very happy that they're here. Um, there is an organization here in the area called Forward Service Corporation, and among the things that they do, which is a lot, but among the things they do is provide volunteers uh, for other organizations, whether it's a for-profit organization, a non-profit organization, what have you. We're going to find out everything that they do tonight, uh, or at least try, because they do a lot. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to touch on a lot of different things tonight, and I'm very happy to be joined by two folks from Forward Service Corporation tonight. Uh, to my left, in the black, with the very nice scarf, we, <laughs> we have <laughs> Megan Sawal, and Megan is the case manager for Forward Service Corporation. And then to my right, in the white, gray, but on camera, it probably <laughs> looks a little bit whitish gray, uh, we have Allison Knautz. She is the outreach coordinator. Uh, and again, the name of the company is Forward Service Corporation, and um, their website address we'll be putting up throughout the hour, but it is forwardservicecorporation.com. So, and service, not services, even though they provide services. So, all right, <laughs> we got that out of the way. So, um, tell us first, whoever wants to jump on this question, um, what is Forward Service Corporation and how did you get your start? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having us, of first course. off. Uh, we always appreciate being able to educate the community about our resources. Like you said, there's a lot, and we have many opportunities. So uh, we are a nonprofit employment and training. So our main goal, we are in 46 counties throughout Wisconsin. And each county can provide different programs and resources. But the main goal out of all of them is to provide education, uh, training opportunities and career opportunities for individuals who are unemployed or underemployed. Uh, and that is a wide range of individuals it really that we is. work with. <laughs> yeah. And who is the clientele that you work with? I mean, do they have to be on um, unemployment? Do they have to be on some kind of state aid? Um, can they be anyone, whether they're, I mean, say there's someone who feels that they're lacking in certain job skills, whether hard or soft skills, and we'll talk more about that later, but um, can it be someone who just feels that they need a little help with certain things, but they're not getting any kind of state aid? Yes, yeah, so we will be covering a little in depth about our different programs in this area. Okay. Uh, because like I said, being covering 46, specifically we'll be talking about Winnebago County tonight. Okay. And many of our programs we do focus on specific individuals, uh, but we do also love to serve our community. So if people are interested and maybe are unsure if they are eligible or not, that's where my role as an outreach specialist comes in to really help okay. somebody uh, understand where they at right now and how use I, utilizing our resources and opportunities they can unleash their potential in their career and their future and providing for their families. So I know Megan was going to talk on some of our other programs that we have, uh, but 
Yeah, we'll cover a whole gamut of things. <laughs> okay, sure. So how do you receive your money to run this program? So that varies between programs. So in our office, we do implement the W-2 program, which okay. is funded by DHS. Nope, DCF. Yep. This is the fun. And so Department for someone of who doesn't know, okay, there you go. All so right. what that is, is um, basically it's the temporary assistance for needy families. So W-2, which is a Wisconsin Works program, is funded through um, the Department of Children and Families. Okay. And mm -hmm. then we have emergency assistance, which is also funded through the Department of Children and <laughs> Family Services. Okay. So then we also have the FSET program, which is DHS, the Department of Human Services. Okay. And then we also implement WETAP, which is with the DOT. Okay. Transportation. All so right. It varies by program. Okay. Um, like you did say, we do have a lot of resources at our yes. office, so our yes. resources come from various places. Okay. <laughs> all right. And uh, but basically, it's all coming from the state, just one division or another, I guess. Correct. Uh, depending on what service someone utilizes from right. you guys. And it, so. it is dependent on, obviously, Department of Children and Families is going to be, those funds generally go for families who have dependent children. Okay. Um, so that's more where that money goes to. Okay. And um, I'm just going to read this because I don't have it committed to memory. Um, <laughs> but Forward Service Corporation was founded on the belief that you are your, no, I can't even read it, <laughs> that you are our yep. greatest natural resource. Your talents, ambition, and passion can set you up for a rewarding career. Working together, we, they, <laughs> can help you find your calling and then get the training and opportunities to get started. It takes hard work and planning, but we're with you every step of the way. If you're ready to start writing your next chapter, don't wait another minute. Contact Forward Service Corporation today. We want to unleash your potential. So that's, that's a really great, I think, mission statement or mm -hmm. vision. Um, you know, you guys have, how long, how long have you been in Oshkosh? We've been in the Oshkosh, uh, I've been in Forward Service Corporation for three years. I want to say that they got the contract about five or six years prior to that. Okay, all right. But this goal or mm -hmm. mission statement was probably developed long before that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes. all right. Yeah. How long, well, founded in 1979, so uh, more than 39 years you yeah. guys have been doing this. Yeah. So you, they, they've got it down to a science. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if during this next 59, 58 minutes, whatever we're down to now, if you find something that's piquing your curiosity, um, you know, by all means, call them, reach out to them, whether it's through Facebook, their phone number, their website, whatever. Um, you know, it never hurts to find out more information. So let's talk about the various programs that you guys offer. And the first one that you had mentioned, Megan, was W-2. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the one that most people are pretty familiar with. So tell us how you offer assistance to people with if they're on W-2. Sure. So what happens is um, a customer will come in and they will go through eligibility. I'm not going to go into all of those details because there's a lot of criteria. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but essentially what will happen is they'll come in and they'll meet with a financial <laughs> employment planner. And that person will sit with our customers and talk with them about what are their goals, what are their dreams, what do they want to achieve, and what does success look like to them. Because success to me and success to you could be completely different right, things. Right. So just everything is individualized and you want to look at that customer for what they want to achieve not what we want them to achieve right so we really really try to strive to meet people where they're at okay. so we'll talk through barriers what is your biggest barrier to employment and how can we help you overcome that mm -hmm. so that you could reach those goals sometimes it's baby steps you know i mean yeah. we yeah. have people who come in with zero work history or very limited work history or mm -hmm. no references so it's overcoming yeah. those, which is where that work experience you spoke sure, of comes from. Sure. Um, so what we really do is try to focus on the individual and try and figure out how we can best help them reach their goals. So really, it's what do you need from us? What can we give you? Is it education? Is it work mm -hmm. experience? Is it help with a resume? Things of that nature. And then we come up with a plan. Okay. And we do SMART goals. You know, are they achievable? Can you, what's the time frame? 
and then we try to work through all of those steps to reach those goals okay. for that customer. Sure, be, and, and you want the goals to be realistic yes. because mm -hmm. there's nothing more frustrating than, you know, when we all think about goals, we think, oh, you know, yeah, I want to I get to point Z or Y or X, you know, maybe not as far as Z, but a little bit before that. And yet that is very far off and quite often very hard to attain. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more frustrating than having a goal set and then not being able to reach it. And then you feel worse quite frequently mm -hmm. than if you hadn't tried to set a goal at all. <laughs> so you're helping them set realistic goals mm -hmm. based on what they want to achieve. Yep. And we're their okay. support system all the way through it. Yes. If there is an issue, call. We will help you overcome that. We'll work through some options. We'll see what we can do to help you get okay. over that. All right. Sounds good. Um, and then the next program that you offer or implement is EA. Yes. Now, what does EA stand for? <laughs> so one thing I will give you fair warning is, is pretty much all of our programs, there's acronyms for everything. I noticed so that, yes. When I sent this out, I did not really anticipate all that happening, so I'm sorry. But um, EA is emergency assistance. Okay. So right. that is also something where you have to have a dependent child in your home in order to receive this because it is funded through Department of Children and Family Services. Okay. So with emergency assistance, if somebody has a disconnect notice for their water or for their electricity, they can come to us and they have to have a crisis that caused them to fall behind on this bill. Okay. So if they say, I'm going to get my electricity shut off tomorrow, I have a family of four, what do I do? They can come in to our office, fill out an application. The turnaround process is very fast, it's five days. So they're wow. going to know almost, you know, immediately if they have that information with them whether or not they're going to be approved for this application. Um, the other opportunity that they can have with that emergency assistance is if they are currently homeless or have impending homelessness mm -hmm. or have a five-day eviction notice. Okay. So they can come to us and say, okay, I just got this five-day eviction notice in the mail. I don't want to be homeless with my children. Can you help? Mm -hmm. So same thing. There has to be a crisis that caused them to fall behind on rent and then we can potentially help them make that payment. Okay. Obviously the landlord has to be willing to help them, mm -hmm. um, but it's definitely an opportunity for them to you know, maybe make that extra payment that they couldn't because their car broke down or right. they lost a job or something of that nature. Okay, so again, but it has to be someone with minor dependent children Correct. though. Mm -hmm. And you know, I know you guys don't make the rules or control this, but uh, you know, it just seems to me like there are so many things in place for people with children mm -hmm. and that's good yeah but mm -hmm. there's plenty of people out there who don't have children yeah. who they may get a disconnect notice for mm -hmm. their utilities or they may get an eviction notice from their landlord is there something within your organization that can help them or is it strictly people who have minor dependent children for this program, yes, only dependent children, okay. but we do refer out a lot. Um, I always get these two myself. St. Vincent de Paul has okay. been phenomenal with helping people um, if we refer them over there. Um, we also really rely on AdvoCap, um, okay. the Bridges program with Jordan. She's phenomenal. So we do a lot of referring. We honestly could not do what we do without all of our community partners. Right, yeah. So yeah. we definitely rely on them for the programs we know or the, that we know we can't help with, really. Okay, all right, excellent. Yeah, I, to repeat what Megan said, a lot of times we do have individuals come in that just say, I've heard of Forward Service Corporation, what can you do for mm -hmm. me? And we don't want to turn people away without providing the resources. And we'll get into FSET, but sometimes it is, you know, we can't help you with this specific issue that you face at this time. But looking in the future, we do have opportunities that we could get you connected to when we're mm -hmm. thinking, okay, employment and mm -hmm. in the future, when it comes to that bill time, how can we right. work with you as far mm -hmm. as budgeting, different things of that nature. So right. Right. trying to assist with their needs that are current and kind of those crisis situations, right. but right. then also thinking long-term because uh, sometimes it is hard when someone is faced in a crisis situation to think, okay, beyond that. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. where we want to support and right. be somebody's advocate. Yeah. And right. that's also by referring to other partner agencies and yeah. getting them connected to those resources. You know, um, you guys do so much, and this is just touching the surface here, <laughs> but it's amazing to me 
um, I first went into the Forward Service Corporation office because um, they provide volunteers for different organizations. And I'm not an organization, but I need volunteers <laughs> for this show. Mm -hmm. We had a situation, um, regular viewers uh, or listeners on the radio have um, heard me probably say this before. We had uh, a full crew, and but three of the people were high school students. Oh. Um, you, as long as you're 16, you can volunteer here. And they all graduated from high school uh, this past summer, okay. just before the summer started. And they've now started college. Oh. And so I need people. Yeah. So <laughs> someone told me about you guys. I went in to meet with you. And what was amazing to me, and maybe you have people that I didn't see, but I saw a receptionist and three people <laughs> you two and Corey yeah. who was supposed to be here tonight and was ill unfortunately so um, we're sorry she's not here but I hope that by the time this airs she's feeling better <laughs> but I mean do you guys you do an awful lot with a very small staff I mean mm -hmm. are you supported by um, a larger staff like in Madison or Milwaukee <laughs> or someplace yeah so in our office we do serve the W-2 program, the FSEP program, um, but we also have with the EA, the, sorry, emergency assistant. Emergency assistant. <laughs> <right. laughs> um, we do have a call center, and what we okay. noticed was there were so many people who needed help mm -hmm. that it was easy for us to, you know, have a backup. We would have five or six people in the lobby. Well, what's the easiest way to make this happen? Yeah. Well, now we have video phones. So if somebody comes in, because we have our team of people, case managers mm -hmm. and our account representatives and all those people, but then we have a video phone that goes to Madison. Oh, cool. So when okay. the person comes in and applies for emergency assistance, they pick up this phone and then there's a smiling face on the other <laughs> side saying, hey, how can I help you? So we do have an amazing support system with our organization. Um, our main office is in Madison. But, I mean, in our office as a whole, we have two FSET case managers. We have mm -hmm. two W-2 case managers. We have three team leads. We have an account rep. We have our clerical support. So more people that I didn't see. Yes. <laughs> yes. a whole other part of our building where the magic happens, where we, you know, meet with our customers and really work through yeah. all their problems. And see Still impressive, uh, even with that small of a staff. I'm glad to know it's not as small as I thought. <laughs> I promise there's more than three of us. <laughs> I, I was thinking you guys were miracle workers, um, but that's still a very small staff given yeah. everything mm -hmm. that you do. So let's talk about the next program then, and you've kind of mentioned it. It is FSET, F-S-E-T, and I know that that stands for something. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so what does that stand for, and wh what's involved in that program? So FSET is Food Share Employment and Training, and our main goal is to help individuals that are seeking employment get connected to employers and community resources to set them up for success. So a lot of times that is uh, reviewing resumes, doing career assessments, some of the stuff we'll review a little bit more mm -hmm. further on as well, uh, but really understanding where is somebody at and where do they want to go. Uh, a lot of people can have backgrounds of job hopping or like Megan had said earlier work history gaps or maybe they're underemployed uh, because a lot of wages in this area aren't at living wage costs. Right, right. So really trying to understand what are your goals and how can we use our resources and our connections to move you forward. Sure. So really getting them connected to employers in the area that we work with and we have very generous employers in this area that have been willing to work with us, whether it's through job fairs or mock interviews. Mm -hmm. And that's really what sets somebody up for success sure. is by being able to practice some of those skills and understand. Uh, we really try to educate our customers on what is manufacturing. It's not this dark, dirty place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually very nice and there are lots of different opportunities there. Mm -hmm. So just educating them on those, some of that information, and then schooling. Food share employment and training is for anybody that's receiving food share. Okay. So it's really, you know, you had talked about dependent children earlier. If you have dependent children or you don't have dependent children, we, we'd be happy to get you connected and find out ways that we can help you move forward. And 
Uh, we also assist with transportation and different supportive services. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot to that program to help individuals. It is an opportunity. So yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and then the next one, um, you mentioned about transportation. Um, I forget where I was, um, just it, it was after I'd been into your office. Um, again, can't remember where I was, but I saw a flyer hanging with a bunch of little phone <laughs> number tabs that you <laughs> yep. can pull off on the bottom. And um, it talked about if you needed money for car repairs and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. And so that brings us to uh -oh. the next program, we tap <laughs> and W E T A P. Yep. So that stands for what? So that is Wisconsin Employment Training Transportation Assistance Program. <laughs> so Wisconsin Employment Transportation Assistance Program. Okay. And working with anybody in the employment realm here, you would know that transportation is a little bit harder in Oshkosh. Just with we have a lot of second and third shift jobs. The bus mm -hmm. doesn't run at certain times or right. during certain days on the weekend. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people might have cars but don't have the financial assets to get car repairs. Mm -hmm. And so this is really to help anybody in the community that has a car repair and we have lots to offer. So uh, you can get up to $1,600 in a car repair loan and you only have to pay back 50% within the first year. Hmm. So, you know, that really does help out somebody uh, that maybe has a large car repair and is looking at like, oh my goodness, how do I do this? <laughs> so we have Mary Tellawilly, who is our mobility manager, and she sits down with people. We need at least two car repair quotes and looking at what needs to be done. We go through budget information and work alongside FISC as well. If, uh, somebody is interested mm -hmm. and really has been a benefit to our community. I believe we've had over 25 loans so far. and In how long a period of time? It started in April or I want to say April. Oh, yes. of this year? Yeah. Yes. So it's we're only so talking about six or seven months mm -hmm. old here. Right. So there has been a huge need and okay. that's what this is to help with the transportation issues that are occurring in our area. WeTap does have um, also a van pool component to it that we are working with employers to set up. Okay. So if there are employers in the area that are interested in that, we'd love to talk a little bit further. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And as you had said, you know, if anybody's interested in more information on these programs, we'd love to discuss more in depth about the information. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the van pools is really geared to get people connected who don't have transportation to an employer. Okay. So they would have like a route and everything planned out so individuals would know, I have stable transportation that will mm -hmm. get me to my job and during the time that they can ride it for up to six months, okay. hopefully they would find transportation so that mm -hmm. in the future, now right. they are stable in their employment in, with transportation. Sure. Is there... Um a certain distance to which that van pool would cover um, or here's why I'm asking because I know a lot of people in the area work at quad graphics mm -hmm. but quad is down you know as you're mm -hmm. heading toward Milwaukee certainly not as far as Milwaukee but you know I they're past Fond du Lac um, for right. sure so is, is there a certain distance to which this will go or would that encompass something like quad graphics or what's the particulars on that? Yeah, so since I'm not the mobility manager for WeTap, I don't want to speak too much uh, for Mary, but I do know that our goal is to get people connected to employers. And so quad graphics has been one um, that has come up or, you know, Alliance Laundry, places that are outside of our area that sure. buses don't go to, yep. um, that have great wages or their consistent shifts or maybe we have mm -hmm. a relationship with that employer already. Yeah, yeah. So that's some of the work that we're working and trying to piece together the puzzle sure. <laughs> of all of those components. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, like I said, Barry would be a great contact for that mm -hmm. and would be able to answer more in depth with employers for okay. that. 
Excellent. Because uh, Mary would definitely talk. So what would happen is she would go and talk to the employer and say, okay, well, how many people do you have coming from this general area? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, yeah. the, even the driver is actually an employee of that organization or of oh, that neat. company. Okay. So it's a group of five to seven people, and they would all meet at one certain location, mm -hmm. and then the van would drive them all to work. Sure. So even the driver is an employee. Sure. So it's it's kind well, of Well, nice to know that instead of just being a limo type, <laughs> a limo type driver. <laughs> it's an Uber. And he's sitting there yeah. back drinking coffee while they're working. You no, know, so. yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, and there it's through Enterprise. So yeah. So very reputable. Enterprise car leasing? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, so very right. reputable company that we're able to work with and help us through this process okay. as well. Yes. And there are, you can have a subsidized fan pool or unsubsidized. So we're willing to work with employers for both. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Well, we talked about Mary and, um, you know, her handling this WeTap program. Um, so what specifically do each of you do? Well, so um, I, I do everything. No, um, we all do. I mean, there really yeah. isn't a position in the office that we don't all cover at one point or another. We're very mm -hmm. team oriented. But um, my main thing is doing the case management piece. A lot of components to that. Um, so basically, we want to make sure that we're meeting with our customers as often as we can. Mm. Because, you know, the biggest thing we want to focus on is engagement. Um, we want to make sure that everything we're doing is for the benefit of our customers. Yes. So as I stated before, you know, they'll come in, we'll sit down, we'll come up with that plan. And that's what we try to stick to. But what mm -hmm. I love about it is it's not set in stone. Yeah. So just because we come with that plan, that first day you meet with us and we talk about, you know, all of the stuff we have to cover. Yeah. Um, your ideas might change when you go home. <laughs> like, well, maybe that's not exactly where I wanted to go. Yeah. So we actually have a group case management. We call it Unleashing Your Potential every Wednesday. So our customers can come in every single Wednesday and meet with their case manager just to touch base briefly. Hey, how's it going? Where'd you apply this week? Is it something you really want? Can we follow up? Mm -hmm. So just taking that opportunity to meet with, you know, the people we're trying to help because without mm -hmm. our customers, we don't have you know what's our purpose right right so just meeting with them talking through barriers a lot of things can come up in a week's time oh yeah um, <laughs> you know if you have child care set up and your child care closes oh my gosh what do I do because that's happened um, yeah. Is it, does that happen frequently or not so much um not Although as once often. is bad enough. Yeah, I know, uh, you know within the last two weeks there was a child care that didn't close in Oshkosh and that caused mm. a huge rift because sure. it's already I mean Child care is a huge need, and yeah. there's wait lists. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people who are paying for spots for their child that's not even born yet. Um, wow. So there is limited spots for child cares. Mm -hmm. um, I know it, that's a great need. You can't work if you don't have a place for your child to go. Right. Um, that's mm -hmm. not stable. Right. So just being there for our customers and making sure that we can help them meet those goals. We will talk, like I said, through their barriers. We will look at what their education wants are. Do you want to possibly go to school at the Tech for a Short-Term Certificate program? We can probably look at trying to help make that happen. Okay. Um, we have a great partnership with Fox Valley Tech. It's really awesome what we were able to do with them. We've mm -hmm. had a couple manufacturing essentials programs that they've done oh. where they have done a 40-hour training. Uh, was this for two weeks? For which one? The we manufacturing oh, essentials. Oh, yes. So it was two weeks, 40 hours, and it was very intensive. They did OSHA. They did forklift. They uh -huh. did all of these things. Wow. And then at the end, they had a job fair for all of the people who attended. Excellent. So those are the things we love. When we can mm -hmm. give our customers those trainings and then attach it to an employer to say, okay, now you have this certification. Mm -hmm. Get after it. Get out there. Go talk to these employers and get mm -hmm. that life-changing job. Because right. most of them were paying anywhere between twenty and thirty dollars an hour. Holy cow! So when you come That's in, you know, receiving good. state aid, and you're able to walk out with a thirty dollar an hour job, that is life changing. I don't care who you are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now I want to go back for just one sure. second, Megan, because um, you you talked about daycare, yeah. uh, child care. You know, because as you mentioned, Allison, we've got so many different shifts here. You know, yeah. we're not just a first shift community. Right. Right. Um, second and third shift. But most of the child care places are only open first shift. Yeah, you know, it may go a little bit into second shift, mm -hmm. but it's not going to go all the way up to, you know, 10 mm -hmm. or 11 at night. Um, what options 
are there for people who have a second or third shift job and have child care issues? So that's actually, we have a whole barrier section for like in this list here, <laughs> but really there aren't. Um, there are not mm -hmm. a lot of options for second and third shift. There used to be one on ninth, I believe, that didn't really make it very long. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I don't really know what all of the options are. I don't really know of any off the top of my head. Okay. So most of our customers are relying on family and friends and mm -hmm that's hard because if you're well, doing that yeah. five days a week yeah and your kid you know it's it's hard child care is a huge barrier so that is a big problem mm -hmm. um, also the cost of child yeah. care and that is where as case managers when you're working with an individual a family trying to assess what are our child care options through the W-2 program we do have opportunities to assist with some of that child care assistance. So those would be options that we can kind of look into as far as for first shift, obviously yeah. second and third shift. If there are no facilities that, that do those times, unfortunately for an individual, it is very limited. Sure. Uh, and that's where we do try to process and talk through, okay, what are your options? Do you have family that's going to be reliable and, you know, are there options that if you take this second shift job in the future, could you move to a first shift? So trying to come up with, instead of being a little more tunnel vision mm -hmm. on problems, coming up with solutions together. So it mm -hmm. is, all right, this is what it looks like right now, but in the future, and how can we work together to try and move forward? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I'm hearing <laughs> is, um, a, a daycare, which really wouldn't be a daycare if it's open second and third <laughs> shift, but child care opportunities that are second and third shift in nature, mm -hmm. that sounds like that is a big need in the area. Mm -hmm. and I think you'd um, become famous <laughs> if you started a second or third shift. <laughs> yeah. Child well, care. and it would be interesting to know why that one didn't, didn't make it, you know. I, yeah. I doubt seriously just based on what you guys mm -hmm. have been saying, that it was for lack of, of business because yeah. there's so many shift workers, not just in Oshkosh, but all over the place in, yeah. in Northeast Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the other thing that I'm thinking, um, you know, the movie Nine to Five, which that's dating me a little bit, <laughs> but you know, they were very, very forward thinking women in that movie and they actually, started a daycare right in the company, mm -hmm. you know, and it seems like more of our larger companies need to have something like that um, to help accommodate their, their workers. Mm -hmm. And I, so. do, I do feel we're in a community where employers are, they recognize some of these concerns yeah. and they do want to work with organizations that are seeking to address some of these concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know like Quad Graphics, if that is an amazing facility. If you ever are able to walk through and see, they have doctors and eye doctors and a fitness right center. Right in the building? Yeah. Yes, wow. and a child care. And, um, so they are trying to see how do we help come alongside our employees mm -hmm. that do have some of these concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm. they just came off the top of my head, but there are a lot of employers that are a part of a steering committee that Forward Service has with account reps of how do we address some of the barriers that future employees of your company are facing? Mm -hmm. Because it does affect for them their time, you know, yeah. HR, yeah. it creates a strain on them. And then sure. for these individuals, whether they're falling behind on bills or they're unable to pay or provide for their families, both parties, it's right. an, a loss, yeah, yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, you know, times have changed and mm -hmm. uh, everybody, not just individuals, but companies too, they kind of need to get with the times, um, you know, and, and that's not a slam at any particular company, it's just, it's it's the way our world is evolving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you want to be successful, then you have to help provide some services that are going to make your your people successful and in turn right. it's a cyclical kind of thing mm -hmm. you know so so Allison tell us a little bit about what you do at Forward Services. So I'm the outreach specialist and my goal is to really learn about other community partners and educate the community about our programs. 
And I say programs loosely um, <laughs> <laughs> because I think many times it comes with like people already have ideas or thoughts about what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But really, we have so many opportunities and resources to connect individuals to, like we have talked about, from where they're at to help whatever their future is. And many times people think, oh, well, it's just for these individuals or these individuals. And my goal is to really share and show we have so much more to offer because life happens. Mm -hmm. You lose a job or you lose mm -hmm. a family member or health. And many a times we are very fortunate if we don't struggle with those things. And so when all of a sudden those, those times occur, it can create a little bit of a crisis. And I don't know where to turn. And seeking help sometimes can be a little bit scary. Sure. And yeah. so my goal is to really present our opportunities to individuals of look at all that's available to you and we want to be here as an encouragement and advocate for you during this time so that in the future you can look back and say thanks for your help but look at where I'm at now <laughs> and yeah. and have that positive mo momentum forward sure absolutely uh, and we have many great partners that we work with so also building that relationship if we we know that we can't service every single person how they may need, but if we can help them in certain areas while working with partners who maybe can help them with other barriers they have at the mm -hmm. same time, you get all the more resources at once. Sure. So sure. my goal is to, like I said, educate the community, but also learn about other partners and how can we work together to sure. really provide uh, better services and collaboration for our community. Sure. So there are two components here. One is getting people into into paying jobs, mm -hmm. yes. um, but the other component is what I had reached out to you guys for, and that was for volunteers. Mm -hmm. So how do you decide if? Um, well, let's talk a little bit about sure. that. But as part of that, how do you decide if someone is going to be um, going for a paying position or a volunteer position. How? Tell us about that part of the program. Sure. So, what we do is we consider volunteers work experience. So, one thing that we look at when people come to us is, what are your goals? Do you have experience doing that industry? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Well, let's see if we can find one of our community partners and say, hey. You know, Cheryl has this great opportunity with this amazing TV show. Let's send you over there. Thank you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, see what kind of skills you can gain that you could use in real world. Mm -hmm. So every single placement or volunteer opportunity or work experience opportunity we have is an opportunity for that customer to build their resume, to get transferable job skills, and mm -hmm. to say, yes, I have experience doing this. Here are all the things I've learned, and here is my reference. Right. So that is really what we look at. So when somebody comes in and says, I haven't worked in 12 years because I've been home with my kids, I have no idea where to start. Okay, well, what industry would you like to work in? And I will tell you nine times out of 10, people will say, I'll do anything. Mm -hmm. And then you have to ask, would you really do anything? <laughs> yeah. Because I'm, I mean, I get what they're saying, but at the same time, like, do you want, anyone can go find a job tomorrow. Yeah. Everywhere is hiring. but. Is it going to be a career you want to stay in? Or is it going to be something that meets their particular lifestyle yeah. and their family mm -hmm. setup? You know, yeah. everything doesn't, doesn't apply necessarily. Right. Um, so I guess it would be, you know, if they're job ready. So if they yeah. come in, we have people with, people with master's degrees who have come in and said, I don't even know where to start looking. Wow. Be, and we're like, okay, well, let's get you connected. Because, you know, yeah. you, they'll get out of these jobs or get laid off or something bad happens. I mean, you can go through a traumatic event mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. and be sad. Yeah. And then yeah. how do you pick yourself up when you don't have a support system? Mm -hmm. And they'll come into our office and we are your support system. Right, right. So, okay, well, what happened? Well, what do we need to do to get you over this hump, you know, yeah and moving in the right direction. And you don't even have to go into that same career path. Let's find something new. Mm -hmm. So that's where these work experience sites are so important because yep. it's getting a schedule, it's being accountable, it's getting you out of your house so you're not so sad. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
purpose. So if you come in and you're job ready and you just you know got laid off or you have all of the skills you you need, you just need a little help. Mm -hmm. That's when we would send you with the account rep right away and say, okay, here are some job opportunities. Here are some of our partner employers. Okay. And then if you need that work experience or if there's something you really want to focus on that you have zero experience, yeah. we're going to send you to a work experience. Site. So it really depends on where they're at in mm -hmm. their life. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I even think, gosh, I wanted to be a lawyer and a veterinarian, <laughs> all these things that I'm not doing for right. a very good reason now. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. uh, I think a work experience provides the opportunity for individuals to learn, oh, this really wasn't what I thought it was going mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, gosh, I wouldn't have thought I liked that, and I love this. So that's where, as case managers and account reps, mm -hmm. really listening to understand you know, what are someone's goals and what are, when they're talking to us about what motivates yeah. them, because maybe they've never thought, maybe they've talked about, oh, I see really cool media or photos and video and I'm, I want to get into it, but I don't know how. Great. We have this great connection. <laughs> Let, see if it's something that you actually mm -hmm. want to do and are interested right. in versus right. getting a job and then you're like, oh, this wasn't what I wanted. and. And leaving that. Yeah, or it's not what I expected. That right, kind of thing. Yeah. right. Well, I, you know, I don't know how many people, I tend to think there's probably very few people who walk through your doors or call you on the phone and say, I want to work in radio or television or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, it, this is just not just that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's, as you guys saw tonight, it's, it, it's uh, very limited technical knowledge, really, but it's, it's um, paying close attention to timing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's showing up when you're supposed to show yeah. up and, you know, being accountable and dependable and um, just someone that people can rely upon, yeah, right. you know, mm -hmm. and, um, but it's also what I tell people is, you know, when you do this, you're making a lot of neat connections because mm -hmm. we have a lot of different kinds of guests on this show. You guys are one type, you know, we get politicians and, and city and school officials on the show, county officials on the show, um, other nonprofits, uh, you know, it, it runs the gamut. And so you're making a lot of nice connections that you can perhaps use yeah. at some other point yeah. in your life. Yeah. So it, it's a good experience. So do it. <laughs> yeah, it's all we, about networking. Yeah, we have a ton of sites throughout the community. We use St. Vincent de Paul a lot. Um, Salvation Army, they'll help with the kitchen. We have everywhere Habitat for Humanity. Mm -hmm. Where else? All over. Um, well, you yeah, mentioned yeah. Habitat for Humanity, and you guys had sent some pictures <laughs> over. Yes. Um, now, this was part of your um, job skills training. <laughs> yes, was you that did what it. that is? Yeah, I, I figured out the JST. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a handle on these uh, acronyms and so They're forth. They're kind of fun to here. say after. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we've got some pictures, and uh, these were from. Um, I think you told me they were um, done with Habitat for Humanity, yep. mm -hmm. and um, a job skills training with Tradesman International. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, I wasn't even sure the picture was up yet, but it is up apparently. <laughs> so what are we seeing right here now? So first off, job skills training is a great example of some ways that we connect individuals to opportunities. Okay. So we Just had one the second. We can pull that down for a second if you guys don't oh, mind okay. in the control room so that we can actually talk about what job yeah. skills training <laughs> is. So there we go. Okay. So tell us what it is and then we'll look at the pictures. Okay. <laughs> Keeping you on your toes. <laughs> um, so job skills training is really an example of what we do to get some individuals different opportunities. So Tradesman International was an employer we had worked with mm -hmm. to develop a training that's geared towards construction and what we did is through that time people had OSHA 10 certification mm -hmm. and that is something that we assist with. Uh, they also yes. learn blueprints. Hmm. Yep. So how to how read, read blueprints read? or yes. how to draft so them? How or? do you how do you read them, measuring? Okay. And then they also practiced uh, we had which we had forgotten, but it's really cool because <laughs> it was a house that came for you to put together. So you had to measure, you had to glue, you had oh. to 
uh, hammer things together. So really using your hands to practice what you had just learned. So gaining those skills of, okay, what do I know and how do I put it to actual use? And then communicating with other people because you're doing this with other individuals as well. Mm -hmm. So how do you communicate with your coworkers and your supervisors that are working with you mm -hmm. and the soft skills? So really learning more about that industry. Mm -hmm. And then Habitat for Humanity partnered with us and people were able to go on site and help build a home. Okay. Which I just think is so rewarding for an individual to see this is what I just completed. Now yep. look at what I helped a family that will move into at some point. And that I just think is an amazing way for people to move forward and see their success and the momentum and gain the confidence to go back to sure. a job or start a new job, things of that nature. Absolutely. So let's look at those pictures from Tradesman mm -hmm. yes. International. And as we're looking at them, you can kind of tell us what it is that we're seeing. So what's being depicted right here, for example? So this is um, one of the times in which they were building uh, reading blueprints and building that miniature home. Okay. So putting that together using different tools and uh, the wood pieces. It's not just Legos. It no. is not. <laughs> so up on the wall there in the back, you can see the blueprints. Mm -hmm. So what they had to do is they those big long sticks on the table, mm -hmm. those are the boards. Okay. And so they had to read the blueprints and then measure out all those little tiny wow. boards and they <laughs> had to build this house. Yeah. Okay. And next photo then. So, more so this is same. another example, yes. Okay, next. So it is promoting that teamwork component. Uh, these what do we were, have here? Yeah, so these were three individuals that participated in the job skills training. Uh, actually, the man in the middle in the green sweater, he found employment mm -hmm. through this opportunity okay. uh, by the end of it. And then Jennifer at the very end to the our only right. Female. Yeah, the only <laughs> female. <laughs> she is a team lead in our Oshkosh office. Okay. And so she was with them uh, working alongside. So I think that also really shows like we're here to support you and we're in this mm -hmm. together. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. We're not asking you to do anything that we're not willing to do ourselves. Right, basically, Absolutely. right? Okay. And so this uh, is at the Habitat for Humanity build, and they actually met the family that was moving into it. And uh, one of the individuals, he didn't. He did not want to do it. He was worried about transportation. And so the day before, one of another man was said, I will drive you there. You need to do this. You are coming with me. So they really do encourage each other. And it does become an opportunity for people to come alongside each other and learn, OK, this is how we're going to support each other through this process. Mm -hmm. OK, next. Oh, wow. So they Look. built that wall. Yeah. <laughs> That is amazing. And is that the last picture or do we have yeah, another one? I that's the last that's one. Mm -hmm. That is really something. I mean, um, what an incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I know what you mean about having that sense of pride. Mm -hmm. If you guys have been through Menominee Park, there's little Oshkosh playground yeah. there. Mm -hmm. yes. That was a community build effort. And mm -hmm. um, I was very happy and, and honored to be someone who was pounding some of those nails and so <laughs> And I am not, okay, I am the furthest thing from being a builder <laughs> that you ever, ever wanted to see. But you know, it's not like you have to have all these skills. There mm -hmm. are skilled tradesmen on these sites. Mm -hmm. They kind of oversee and, you know, they make it so easy right. to make a contribution and to feel proud about the contribution that you've made. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really neat about Habitat or you know, any of these things that you guys are doing. Um, we're down to about 10 minutes here, and I wanted to talk just a little bit about um, the other um, training that you provide, the job, uh, job skills training, mm -hmm. uh, because it's not just Tradesman International. Yeah. Um, there's like retail, e-commerce, manufacturing, um, customer service, virtual. Um, curriculum slash employers. Um, so talk to us a little bit about those things. So job skills training, it's not just focused on one industry. We do try to focus on many. So providing opportunities, whether they're interested in changing their careers or they want further training or understanding about an industry, 
they can participate in this. So we do virtual training where it's on a computer, uh, but they have headsets so they're able to talk to instructors and it is still very hands-on because it's in our office so we're mm -hmm. still working together through mm -hmm. it. And they also have webcams so you can yeah. actually see everybody <laughs> that's in the class. Yeah. So we have a computer lab, so everybody that's in this class sits there. So you're there. a part yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's great because we actually go with our Sheboygan office or our Fond du Lac office. So there's multiple offices in these job skills trainings. Mm -hmm. So it's all, you know, it'll be a retail for two weeks. And then um, we can switch it up and do the e-commerce. That was kind of fun because now everybody's doing their order, their groceries, and yeah. pick them up. So mm -hmm. the e-commerce was based on those ordering online mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then usually well actually always it's attached to an employer as well mm -hmm. so they'll go through the trainings and then they have an interview at the end with an employer okay so. fantastic um, you know I, I want to touch on um, there's there's more than just on the job training first you have to kind of get the job right. you know and um, it's not just a case of filling out a resume anymore mm -hmm. uh, you know and having a a one and done interview I mean it's a process mm -hmm. so um, do you guys provide resume assistance uh, for people cover letter assistance uh, you mentioned earlier Allison about employers who are willing to offer up their time to do mock interviews mm -hmm. and that kind of mm -hmm. thing so tell us about the various those kinds of skills that you assist people with so when somebody first comes into our office, uh, they'll do a career assessment. And it's very fascinating because I took it myself to kind of <laughs> better understand, oh, what are my, with my skills and experience, what do they say I'm a good fit for? And I say it's very fascinating, but I don't really remember, so I can't give an example <laughs> of what I'm a good fit for. <laughs> but you're a great fit for outreach. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I think for a lot of individuals, it's just, too easy to think, oh, I don't have skills or I don't have this experience, so I can't look at these jobs. When in reality, we do have lots of skills and talents, just maybe you have to learn more about them. Mm -hmm. So we work with them to do those career assessments. And then our account reps who work directly with employers also work directly with the customers to help with resumes, cover letters. Uh, going through those career assessments. You know, it says you're interested in clerical. Let's talk a little bit further about that. Let's create a resume so that when you're applying for clerical positions, mm -hmm. it matches up. Uh, and facilitated job search as well. That's mm -hmm. something where we'll sit down and help somebody job search because it is overwhelming yeah. when you pull up a website and there's thousands of jobs. So yes. helping out with some of those components. And we have employers in our office all the time. So whether it's job fairs or... Uh, job clubs, career connections, mm -hmm. different ways to connect with employers because I think a lot of times we think employers can be scary mm -hmm. to connect with but in reality they just want to talk, mm -hmm. talk to you, listen and many times we keep them in silos when they say, oh. Okay, explain that because <laughs> we live in a farm area, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we're not really keeping anyone inside. Yeah, we're not. We're not really. <laughs> Just explain that. You're, you're keeping yeah. them sort of isolated a little bit? Or, I think many or times uh, people think of employers in, they just have this idea and stigmatism about mm -hmm. this is the, an employer. Uh, when in reality, we have employers in our office all the time offering to review resumes, do mock interviews, and mm -hmm. they want to help. Mm -hmm. It's not trying to create ways to make the interview and the application process harder and that's what I meant by silos yeah, is yeah. people kind of have these ideas of all that process <laughs> and yeah. it's scary and well and you so know another good out. way you know I've I've told people you know another way of looking at an interview is you're just not being interviewed by them yeah. you're mm -hmm. interviewing Absolutely. them too um, you may f you know ask questions mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's part of what the interview process is. It's give and take on both sides. Ask the questions that you feel you need to ask and you may discover in that question and answer process mm -hmm. that it's not really a good fit for you or it's not quite what you thought it would be. Right. And there's no harm or shame in that either, mm -hmm. you know, really. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think if you think of it as you're interviewing them as well as them interviewing yeah. you, that 
I think, at least for some of the people I've talked to and for myself, I've interviewed for things in the mm -hmm. past and, you know, it, it takes that edge off a little bit and makes oh, it yes. seem less scary. Mm -hmm. So, um, in our last five minutes, what kinds of things do you want to focus on here and really get a message across to people? So, I think there are a lot of people who want to work um, and there's a lot of openings. And one of the biggest things is barriers. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes we all think that there aren't a lot of barriers to employment because there are so many openings in our Oshkosh community. However, um, the, ones, the biggest ones we see are childcare, transportation, and housing. Um, mm -hmm. We touched on childcare, so transportation. So this is one thing that has really come to light for me over the last couple weeks. We have a mom, single mom, with two children who rides the bus. And one day she came up to me and she's like, oh my gosh, I'm just having a really hard day. I was like, well, what's going on? And she started to explain to me how her mornings start. And it was, okay, I had to get up, get my son and my daughter ready. I had to get my son to one place. So she rides the bus, they catch the bus, go to the school, drop the child off. She has to wait a half an hour for the next bus to come. Then she has to go drop her other child off at daycare. So she hops on, goes to that thing, drops her child off, has to wait another half an hour for the bus to come. That's an hour and a half already that she's had to wait and she's not even to her place that she's trying to get to yet. Yeah, and, it, and it's, I mean, it's a necessity, but it's almost a waste of time. You it's know, hard. You need to be able to be doing something, you know, to fill yeah. that time. And uh, yeah, the, that's a barrier for sure. It's huge. And so if you think about that, it's like, okay, so she's already got, you know, an hour and a half into her travel and she's not even to work or to our office yet. So if she misses one of those buses, if her child's having a tantrum, <laughs> then she has to wait an hour before she can get back on the bus to go where she's supposed yeah, to go. Yeah. So I think sometimes, you know, we, my kids throw a tantrum and sometimes I'm late getting in the car, but I can still make it where I'm trying to go because I'm not relying on that bus. Mm -hmm. So I think being in the office and talking to customers who are riding the bus, it's really made me realize how hard it actually is to get somewhere on time when you are mm -hmm. riding the bus. And these folks aren't necessarily in the position to call Uber. Yeah, or a friend, you know. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. So it's, it's very hard with the transportation. Then there's no licenses. They can't get those back. You know, they have fines, they have fees, they can't pay them. Right, right. Um, fortunately, FSET is able to help with some of those fees if you qualify for the mm -hmm. program. Um, so that's good. But then you have the homelessness, you have the doubled up housing, you have people who are babysitting for other people, so they may not be able to come to our office to use our s services as much as they want. Um, and then you have those, the soft skills and the hard skills, which is what we really try to focus on. And just real briefly, yeah. uh, tell us what hard skills, what the difference is between hard skills and soft skills. Because <laughs> so so there is a difference. Yeah, absolutely. So hard skills are more like the industry focus, like, you know, the job skills. Soft skills are more like, are you know are you professional are you polite do you, can you show get along? up can you communicate yes with people? if you're upset how do you react mm -hmm. um, so we work through a lot of that in a lot of our workshops because we have workshops okay. at our office all of these things just trying to help people get where they need to be right and right. meet their goals and really that is the focus of every single one of the programs in mm -hmm. our office is just helping people meet their goals and being supportive and doing everything we can to help them be successful, whatever that looks like. Yeah, and certainly addressing those barriers. Yeah. So if there is an individual or you know, you know somebody that needs extra assistance or just that in support, encouragement, and connections, because we have lots of them and resources, we'd love to be able to get them connected. So contacting me at our office in Oshkosh or website any way that they can get a hold of us we'd You're love on to Facebook also oh yeah yes. so. and one thing we love to do on our Facebook page is share our success stories so okay, good love it like it you know we have all of our successes um, and then our website you can also search in any of the counties 
any of our programs. So okay. you Excellent. pop right on there. Very good. Well, um, and they're trying to get us some volunteers also. So um, we're, I'm keeping my fingers crossed and saying a silent prayer about that. But in the meantime, I mean, if you're watching or listening and you've got an extra three or four hours a month and would like to volunteer on the show, I'd be happy to talk, to talk with you about it. Uh, contact me at ionoshkosh at gmail.com or reach out to me through the Ion Oshkosh Facebook page and um, we'll, we'll have a conversation. So anyway, thanks, you guys. Thank Appreciate you. it very Thank much. You. Thanks to the crew. And most of all, thanks to you at home. We'll see you next time. Until then, take good care. Keep your eye on us. We've got our eye on Oshkosh.